He is the co-founder of Tech Play, a startup business. Welcome. And there is also Torsten Busso, wherever he is. Where is Torsten? Dr. Torsten Busso. Do I have to say Dr. Torsten Busso. And then he comes up. Yes, it works. Thank you. Um, who is probably on the other side of business size of Norske uh, Veritas Germanischer um, Lloyd. So both of them will welcome, both of them will um, present really forward looking ASI applications where ASI plays a core role, and uh, that's the uh, business. Starting with you, Leon. Jürgen, I think you I think Jürgen. Yeah. I think it's also Pierre joining this. Oh, huh? okay. oh, um, no, it's uh, uh, Kai Su. Where is he? He is not here, but Pierre is joining. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so Pierre is on. Could anybody try to find our? Maybe you start and I'm trying to find him. Yes, Maybe please. he's downstairs yes, or... Yes. Ah, he, uh, there he is. Oh, it's there you. He is. Oh. Kai. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. So, <laughs> so okay. Um, so I propose we... The, the sequence is uh, Leon first? Or how does it work? Do you have a presentation, Leon? Okay, so if you would like to take a seat in the front row for the electric city over here, for the time being. Yeah, sure. we will first do the presentations and then go up after this to, to sit there. Thank you. And um, not ask enjoy you. being here in Hamburg. I come from the Rotterdam area and uh, I've been around now in the looking into the maritime industry for five years. Uh, basically, I was always very passionate about uh, technology, very passionate about collaboration, and very passionate about innovation. And those three words made me, made me shift uh, for five years ago and have a look at the maritime industry. I actually went on board with vessels to get an idea of how the processes are looking and how technology, data, uh, could be used to improve uh, that uh, area. Um, I have a background in IT, uh, and I really believe that uh, the value of technology is in actually in the hands of the end users. You, we need to be passionate about how to get technology to work, but it's also about uh, the end user who is using the technology. And that's basically the approach that we have been taking. One of the reasons I've been heavily involved in open source and open data, one of the reasons of moving towards the direction of uh, uh, the maritime sector was actually there was a real-time data source available, which was called AES. And I thought, well, I've seen a lot of thing, a lot of open data, but I haven't seen the value driven out of it. And I thought, uh, yes, I think that uh, offers a great, uh, great potential. So basically, that's also the focus uh, that we have taken. We focus on the use of, opera uh, of uh, AES data and, and other data in the field of uh, operations and also enabling collaboration. Because if you look at uh, ports, there's really a collaborative process. Um, TechPlay, I founded it uh, three, three years ago, uh, and we put a focus on a couple of uh, elements that we have been looking on. We've been focusing on port call, it was being mentioned this morning also in the panel. Uh, that's one of the key areas that we did develop a lot of things, uh, a, lot, a lot of information. Um, inland barging, the, the other area uh, where we focus on, and then some things that have to do with smart infrastructure, or actually it's actually the vessel uh, that might encounter a bridge. I'll come to some examples of these uh, things. Um, as I said, I really believe in the user, getting the user involved, um, and uh, not talking about bits and bytes, but really having a look at the process. What is happening in the port? How does this physically work? What are the issues that you're running into? And we developed several tools uh, to play with desktop tables, like you can see over there, in, in really making processes tangible and visible, that you really put it onto the table, and that you also, there, what I noticed is there are a lot of hidden assumptions in the maritime world uh, that you will not find out, uh, or you will find out too late once you have got your application in, in place, and then you will figure out, oh, we made a wrong assumption. So we're using these tools in a lot of sessions to get an idea of what can, what can happen and what can be done. 
And then again, the next step is also about data, getting the data in, on one hand AES, on the other hand also with IoT kind of devices, uh, and making that visible. So it's about making things visible and tangible. Um, we started three years ago already, have built up quite a track record with uh, quite some companies uh, looking into what value can be harvested from the AES uh, world. Um, I would like to focus on a couple of, of use cases uh, to uh, show, and I will show some generic tools. But basically in the operations, one of the fields that we identified is like, uh, it's the real-time monitoring of the process where value is, can be added. Uh, we had this, this morning the session about the dot on the map. Uh, the dot on the map is something that I saw a lot of people look onto the screen, like where is this vessel? But actually they are were responsible for managing uh, uh, processes and they wanted to have an idea of the process and what the risks that were involved in the processes. So real-time real processing reports uh, is one of the things. Uh, the other thing which is key is the timestamps, uh, and IES can be a good source for that, uh, to provide timestamps and to have, if you have an agreement on what happened, uh, that it will be of value. And once you've got the AES data, timestamps, that kind of stuff, you also can start notifying people and uh, uh, interrupting or pre sending pre-notifications of what is, uh, what is happening. Um, and you can start mo move towards the real-time monitoring of, uh, of plans, etc., uh, and KPIs even in, in that respect. Um, that is really into the here and now. Uh, but the other thing is, like people are, are planning a lot of the things they are going to do. Uh, so you also uh, need to have, and that was one of the things I found. Uh, in, that we find in our, in, in our journey is the fact that you can have the data, but it is about the integration in what they are actually trying to achieve. And planning was one of the first things that came on top of the, uh, on top of the AES. Having an idea of what is going to happen and make that also interactive. And it's nice that you know a change and that you need to update a spreadsheet and that you send the spreadsheet to someone else to no be, be notified. If you can kept, uh, get these things up and running, that will be great improvements. Trip planning uh, was one of the things that we've been working on. And then uh, the, letter, uh, the last thing is in trade, like there is a lot of also value in the history that you can use for these kind of things. And dashboards to infrastructure. I come to some concrete examples of these. In the operational field, one of the applications we have developed is a port call reporting tool. Uh, this is basically used by agencies, uh, agents in ports, and will notify the agents on things that's, uh, that are, uh, are happening related to the port call that they are, that they are actually uh, performing at that point in time. Um, it will all triggers, all, real, all the, the timestamps uh, that are relevant. This starts with an ETA process that might be the prediction of the captain that has been uh, entered into the system that is the first start. And if changes start to occur because of uh, the ship slowing down, uh, we will uh, notify of changes of the ETA. And then uh, certain points are really important as well. Wh how close is the, uh, is the ship approach? I think these might be skipped eventually, but still uh, in, the, in, the, in, in keeping close to the user, it's important to speak the language. Uh, you have got certain uh, areas that are entered, but also the uh, entire process of nautical process of tugs arriving, boatmen arriving, everything that happens on the water, uh, things uh, will be uh, triggers or events will be generated and uh, posted. Bunker operations that start alongside or bunker operations that do not start outside. These are basically the time of the reports that the, uh, the agent get. He can create his own profile. Uh, and say for each of the events like how he wants to be notified. It's basically a very simple app. It's all API based, but this will help the, uh, uh, the agent to perform his task better and to monitor it. Um, this is an internal tool, but basically uh, what you see is like that we have mapped the entire process of a port call, uh, that we know what are the relevant events, and we can show it on the map what happened. Oh, back. We can show it on the map what, uh, what happened actually, what was the trip the vessel, ma vessel made, all types of events that have been triggered and that are relevant. And then also in a timeline perspective uh, like that, and that gives insights in duration and that kind of stuff. Um, this is the part on the ETA prediction. We have come up with a module that is being used by the port of Rotterdam for their uh, port operations. Uh, basically, this is the, uh, the ETA prediction of the vessel and the route it's going to uh, sail based on history, based on calculations, uh, and it will adjust during the trip, and it's dynamic. 
um, in the into the planning area, that was actually where, uh, uh, when I was talking to uh, clients, they said like, well, I want to know when the vessel arrives, and then we get into the issue I was referring to of the of the uh, the spreadsheets being updated, and they're not being capable of getting the value out of the information because it cannot be passed around. So uh, one of the tools we developed is the K-planning tool. Uh, basically, what you see is uh, the capacity. Uh, the vessels are on a, on a time scale. You see the K, oh, this is the K uh, and entirely uh, defined, which products are delivered where, and the vessels that are, have been scheduled to arrive at a certain point in time, uh, and those are actively monitored, and they start shifting or can start shifting uh, 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 or start, will get not notifications like this red box, like if things are happening, the vessel will not be on time. So this is basically an alerting uh, integration into the tool. Um, and then you also can use that information again in uh, the looking further into the future capacity planning kind of stuff. Um, this is a tool that we developed with uh, the Rijkswaterstaat, it's the Dutch uh, fairway authorities, and uh, the five big seaports. And basically, where they were interested in is like we've got a pretty good idea of what our vessels are doing uh, on the uh, uh, on the sea and when they are entering or approaching a port because you need to be, get notified in, uh, up front. But for the barges, they didn't have a clue. So we developed a tool that is actually a route planner and will give you insight in what will the, the skipper, this, the, the barge captain is actually the, the, the user, what will he encounter on his trip, which bridges, uh, what are the information related to the, all the bridges. Communication can be scheduled. Uh, and even uh, in one of the provinces, uh, uh, we, the, the, the bridge management system is connected to it and bridges will be open based on the position information of uh, vessels. It's still, a, uh, but it's automatically notified. Um, and then again, if you've got all these information on this level of um, uh, 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 the operations, you also can start to leverage that information and uh, have a look on, on what can we learn and what are the things uh, that can be had. Um, capacity planning, this is uh, the port of Rotterdam basically that we see, but what we have identified is like what is the efficiency of the entire port call process, uh, including the operation times of ports, of Turks, uh, oh, operate, let me, so basically like the various parts, uh, uh, parties that have been involved in this. Uh, you get an idea of how, what the departure and arrival times are uh, and how this varies over the, the various locations uh, over the part. And this is a uh, KPI dashboard that is real-time updated. So this also this was a document that was generated once, uh, once a year, uh, but it's now real-time and you really have the ability also to learn and improve your processes. The feedback is completely... Uh, Leon, yeah. five minutes, please come to an end. Okay, and this is the last one. This is actually the bridges, but then from the perspective of a bridge and the performance of why the bridge opened and how many ships passed. Okay, that was it. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, we now have a zero presentation, yes. only an oral presentation. i give you a break for the PowerPoint. Um, <clears throat> all right. DNVGL, um, most of them know us as classification society, so we, we are basically ensuring the ships are uh, safe. And uh, one of the uh, AS applications we have been starting with uh, many, many years ago, actually, um, is uh, uh, one type of the work uh, of the ships being safe is that surveyors go on board, right? And our stations, uh, they started looking at AS data, whether they, uh, that the ships really came. I mean, it's an ETA, pro it's a basically an uh, ETA estimation or whether they uh, uh, got the wrong, wrong information from the office uh, uh, to uh, avoid waiting times. At those days, we also uh, started putting own antennas, or not own antennas, but antennas from Vessel Tracker on our offices um, to increase the antenna network. So that was basically, actually many years ago, I don't remember when, but uh, it was many years ago. Um, we did, uh, um, after the satellite AS uh, came up, um, in the last years, a lot of uh, projects, so one-off projects uh, to help uh, liner companies and uh, ports, uh, especially container liner companies and ports, to look at port productivity, um, uh, liner trade benchmark, etc. It's very similar to what you are uh, saying, uh, but not as an application, but more on projects to do really advisory work and benchmark 
uh, different liners with, with each other. The most, uh, the widely used application we have uh, now is what we call our consumption benchmark. So I'm in charge for our fleet performance solution um, where we monitor vessels and uh, assess the performance of the vessels, especially on fuel consumption. And um, we have developed a global consumption benchmark uh, where, of course, the speed we need for, uh, for this, uh, for certain vessel types, we get from ARS data. There's a new um, application which uh, comes up and is actually written in a regulation uh, that uh, uh, you shall use AIS. I mean, shall means you don't need to, but it's good if you do, right? Which is uh, um, the CO2 monitoring scheme in the EU for vessels. It's called EU MRV. Uh, some of you have, have, might have heard of it. So it's monitoring reporting verification of vessels. So every vessel calling EU ports had to submit by the end of this year certain consumption and uh, not certain CO2 data, which are, of course are based on consumption. And this verification uh, um, shall happen, can happen also with ARS data. So we are using checks on distances and speeds, etc., uh, cross-checking against ARS data in our verification engine we use for this. The last, um, uh, the last application we are working on at the moment is we create a complete uh, ocean data lake, we call it. So it's a combination of basically all publicly available uh, weather, uh, current, temperatures, whatever information uh, you have from different sources to each vessel's position, which is then coming again where AIS comes into play. Um, and that was basically below five minutes, right? Yes. Another two. Okay, Torsten. good. Uh, we have no more applications, right? So, <laughs> yeah, but it's basically, um, the, those are the ones uh, we have. Uh, then let me ask me a question. So uh, you are not, you are a buyer of AIS data, yes. but you don't use IOTA so far. What you that? just pay it in cash or in euros or something. We don't, that, that's we what don't. I know. But the question is, how happy are you with the data you are getting? Um, I think is it useful? It's useful. Uh, I mean, we started now with the with our, <laughs> with our verification engine. Of course, we see uh, we see the problems with it more and more. I mean, if you do benchmarking, or if you do a one of a one of project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not so problematic, uh, but if you do uh, verification with based on data where in certain parts of the world you have no data or you have spikes, uh, so MMSIs are messed up, etc., then we have a lot of problems and so we need to do a lot of uh, fixing together with our partner, obviously. So we fix our ends, they fix their ends um, uh, and getting this done. So that's basically, uh, we had, yeah, uh, it's, it's a lot of work. It's not, uh, it's not so we are happy. It would, would be great to have this, uh, who is the Exegos colleague, yeah? this super satellite, the new ones, right? Uh, we, we still get the other ones, uh, the one hour signals, right? Uh, but of course, the, the problem always comes if you're checking things in their holes or there are spikes or something is missing for a whole day, et cetera. Then, then if there are algorithms that check certain distances, then there's a dot missing, then everything is messed up and we need to do this fix then in our systems. So but I'm generally quite impressed, actually. Now but the two minutes are over. Thank you. The additional two minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much for your support. <laughs> Thank you for your support, Carsten. That was very, very, very useful. Thank you. But wait, this is another reason why we need uh, another another AI summit in two years because there are still gaps and and uh, peaks and things. Mm -hmm. And so perhaps next time everything is solved or not. Um, can I now ask uh, our friend Kaisu to uh, uh, do his presentation? Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, today, I, my speech will introduce uh, uh, some uh, research uh, results. Uh, uh, I have done to support uh, economic and uh, shipping market analysis. Uh, uh, I come from Shanghai International Shipping Institute. Uh, uh, I know today uh, most of uh, most of the speakers are uh, supplier with AI status. Uh, I try to find uh, find the. 
uh, value of the data and uh, I suggest my customer to buy data. Uh, this is my job. Uh, uh, um, Shanghai International Shipping Institute uh, is a shipping, res uh, a shipping research and a consulting organization uh, co-founded by uh, government, university, and uh, uh, enterprises. So I also a uh, teacher in Shanghai Maritime University. Uh, one of the important work uh, of, of me uh, of my, is the uh, construction of the uh, shipping and the port big data library. Uh, so I, we spent four years to uh, years gradually, uh, gradually building our uh, uh, our core uh, com competent competency. So, uh, because the time is uh, little, so I don't. Uh, you can see all the details in PPT. Uh, we believe that uh, accurately and uh, time, uh, timely data will uh, uh, ultimately come from uh, IoT and the e-business. So uh, today, just a few hours ago, uh, uh, our shipping in, in uh, innovation, innovation uh, alliance uh, just uh, established in Shanghai. Uh, four, 14, 14 companies uh, attend this uh, alliance. Uh, I hope uh, I can build a, I can build an ecosystem for data for about uh, 20 years in future. Uh, in past few years, we did some research, such as uh, the service uh, if effic uh, efficiency of container ports or uh, for ships. And uh, we also researched bulk carriers and the bulk cargo shipments. Uh, in the right picture, you can see the uh, the green point means no goods on the on on the ship, but uh, red means uh, it's loaded. So uh, so we we try to find out uh, uh, the uh, the iron and the uh, crude oil. Where they will go? Uh, okay. This year, this year we did some new application research. For example, uh, uh, we uh, we want to know if the container ship is more bigger, more better. It can be seen from the figures that. Although the container ship, ship of uh, 10,000 TU or more, marked with uh, marked with the red, is the main force of on the route from China to Europe. The container ship below 10,000 TU is still the main force in the Pacific Pacific Ocean and and the Atlantic Ocean. The container ship below 4,000 uh, 4, TU is the main force in uh, Intra-Asia and uh, Central America region. So we believe that we don't need ship as large as possible. We need to place the right ship on the appropriate route. So we, so we propose Propose an index for uh, evaluating the operational if, uh, if efficiency 
of the container ship on different roads. Uh, we divide the world into 31 regions and uh, uh, then analysis the ship roads defined by different combi combinations of ships connecting these regions. From the figure, we can see the index of ships of different size on all roads and some outstanding parts uh, represent that the cr uh, corresponding ship, uh, ship type is very beneficial to be placed on the corresponding roads. Uh, let, uh, let we select the, the top 10 roads from China to, uh, to other, uh, other regions. Uh, now we can, uh, now we, uh, we represent, uh, represented the uh, capacity, capacity uh, by blue bar, by blue bar uh, chart. Uh, then red bar graph shows the total amount of en uh, energy energy on each road. From this uh, from this picture, we can see the road from China to Australia and uh, China to Africa is currently very popular in the shipping market. Mm. Uh, in, uh, in this uh, picture, we use a blue bar chart to indicate the number of ships of different size, and the red bar chart to show the uh, efficient uh, effic uh, uh, efficiency index of ship ships of different size. It can be seen that uh, the ca uh, capacity of the liner company to rely on experience is still a little unreasonable and uh, needs to be uh, optimized. Uh, this year we also study, uh, also research the ship ETA, uh, ship ETA uh, prediction, uh, prediction uh, alg algorithm. Uh, after the history AI data modeling, uh, we use the model to uh, for the future ETA predictions. At a distance of uh, 2,600 uh, not, uh, not nautical miles from the port of distance, the predict. Uh, Deviation is controlled to around four, about four hours, and uh, gradually approach the correct value over time. Next, we next we upgrade the ETA prediction uh, uh, algorithm to the situation where multiple ports need to pass. The left picture shows the multi-segment uh, multi, uh, prediction model, and the right picture shows uh, result deviation at uh, different stages. Uh, another research we are just do doing now uh, uh, are conducting to, uh, to help, uh, we are conducting is to help the uh, determine, uh, determine, uh, determine the com commercial value of the uh, art, uh, uh, Arctic Northeast pa uh, passage for different types of vessel okay. through. AIS. Can you come to an end, please? Okay. That would be nice. Uh, this research is based uh, primarily on the analysis of a uh, few uh, consum uh, consumption. Uh, 
thank you for listening. Uh, I'm looking forward to cooperating with uh, with you. But uh, sorry for my uh, for my English. And uh, welcome to uh, follow us on WeChat. Thank you. Thank you. So. So, thank you, Kai. And I think also Kai has won the prize, which does not exist, for the longest way to come to the AI Summit this year. So ah. thank you for coming from, from Shanghai for this event. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Can I ask you to come up? Yeah, Carsten is right. We used to have a prize for the uh, longest distance. If you would like to have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm sure we'll be having a few questions from, from the audience uh, uh, about this uh, the topics. Sorry? Yeah, Pierre, I, this was my mistake. Prayer is coming in the next uh, uh, session. So. so then I ask a question. Uh, Leon. You showed us a little, uh, a lot of applications, but uh, yeah, what do you think? What is the main important one for you, and what is the one, uh, yeah, you you think brings the best value for whatever? And is there something? <laughs> uh, yesterday we talked about sustainability, and we also have a hackathon afterwards. You are the, you are the hackathon man, by the way. He is the creator of the biggest hackathon, the World Port Hackathon, which is not the, was a big hackathon in the last years. But uh, is there something for sustainability in your portfolio, or something really great? Um, yeah, basically, uh, what we came out, there is value in the information. Uh, that's the key thing. And it's the, uh, the point is how to get the value out of the uh, information for the clients. Um, if you look at the portfolio that we have, there is a lot of value in the port call uh, part because that's, the, that's where the biggest uh, uh, things are happening and where there is a lot of traction, uh, making uh, uh, these type of events uh, uh, real-time available. Um, and I think I've shown many applications, but everything is based on the same on, on the same uh, uh, data or engine uh, that is being that is using this information. It's, it's a matter of visualization and involving the user and getting the value out. Um, you can use the data, as was also shown in, in a couple of examples, also easily for uh, for getting an indication on sustainability for uh, the CO2. I think if you look at the port call. Uh, and the, uh, the the example that was mentioned, like uh, this full full throttle head, and uh, uh, not um, uh, and then having to wait, uh, th that's a waste of time. Uh, but I think it's actually in the use. Um, but playing around and coming up with concepts uh, that uh, make uh, in the, on the first slide, I had three words like providing insight, having influence, but creating the insight, what the actual use of a vessel is on a CO2 level uh, uh, would already be a starting point in the discussion and a contribution to that part. So that would be something I would uh, have a look into. Summary. Okay. 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 Uh, then, then, then my question to to Torsten. Um, I know, and that's also what we are doing. You, you, you preparing a lot of dashboards showing efficiency and uh, also basically inefficiency. Yeah. But our problem is a little bit then we show this, okay, this is not efficient, this is not efficient, and uh, here also this is not uh, very good, and then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So what is what would be the next step instead of just uh, me showing inefficiency on a dashboard and then everybody looks at it and then uh, going to sleep for another for another year. So do you have ideas for this or? So first of all, uh, you're right. We have the same experience, right? <laughs> um, I mean, there's, uh, I think that you have to uh, see how people take action on certain things, right? And there's, we have made very good experience by uh, alerting uh, certain people who are in charge, it's being the captain or being someone in the office, the operator giving the speed order, etc., and uh, alert them as often as we see something until it stops, right? Um, and as soon as they understood this, this is really hard because we only look at certain criteria which we think 
are uh, a key for this operation, then he will see a value because he doesn't have, he's not over alerting, so he does not, you don't tell him stuff he doesn't want to. Um, and he sees, uh, I, I can rely on this because I know it's checked automatically by a computer. Um, and that uh, has increased um, dashboard usage. Then the dashboard is behind that, you can then see, is it really true, I don't trust the guy, et cetera, et cetera. But then uh, it's an, uh, an overlay. So that's, yeah. I, th I think we saw a similar question example. from also David from Wesseltrecker. Hang on, Carsten. <laughs> let, let me just finish this here. Um, uh, I think we saw a similar example from, from you with the efficient and not so efficient driving of, of vessels in the northern route. The blue and the, uh, uh, the green and, 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 and the red one. There was laden and unladen. There was a ballast then, yeah. What do you make out of it? Do you give, do you have, whom do you pay, uh, tell uh, the, the results of your, your work? You do the research and what does it do? Where do you go to with the research? Uh, I want to, uh, I want to uh, uh, suggest the ship owners uh, which kind of ship is, uh, is the right one mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the new, new passage. Mm -hmm. uh, in different kind of bulk ship, uh, container ship and uh, uh, others. Uh, but we need to uh, we need to uh, 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 we need to do, uh, have uh, analysis uh, before we make this decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, so sorry. No, it's <laughs> I fine. have many want to say, but uh, but <laughs> my. I think the message came through. Thank you very much. And before you pass on the microphone, I have another one. Sorry, uh, I take the privilege uh, of asking uh, Leon again. Um, I had a déjà vu when I saw your inland waterways things because I was involved in a project called Blue Danube, which I think was 15 years ago, and Reichswaterstaat was also involved in this, I believe, and and the Austrians, of course, um, and. A lot of the stuff that I saw there looked the same. Of course, there were no apps around in, in those days. But w what is the progress and wha what is the, the, the additional value of uh, what you were showing over? And I'm sure you're aware of these, these old projects. Well, uh, basically, one of the complaints the captains had is like, I'm sailing on a vessel and I'm moving around and all the information I need to search on 2700, <laughs> uh, they, they counted it was like, 450 uh, uh, websites or services that they had to look at. So basically what you see is a bundling of information. Uh, it was actually started from a different perspective for Rijkswaterstaat joined later on. Um, but yeah, a lot of the things are available uh, in, in more or less a way, but this is basically an app which is situational aware. Based on what you plan to do, it will provide all the information and give you the alerts which are relevant, which you do not have to check on various other uh, places. And are the ship operators now more willing to, to use the material? Because uh, that was an, a problem in inland waterways, that it was really too conservative, the business. Is it now more open? The captains are using it. Uh, the app is for free. Uh, there are quite, uh, quite a lot of, uh, a lot, quite of them. <laughs> yeah, OK, that's probably the. Okay. But uh, uh, um, y yes, it's, it is being used. And again, it's also about which value it uh, comes out of it. For the port authorities, there's different value because they n have an assessment on how many vessels will arrive. Um, so there is value being created by the use of the app, which is relevant uh, in the context. OK, thank you. Sorry. It's OK. Um, <clears throat> I think this is for Torsten. So I went to a very interesting uh, presentation at the Japan seminar on Tuesday and the an MOL is starting to have sail or they they have a plan to put sails on vessels which will uh, they were they did a test on the the great northern route between uh, Japan and the west coast of the US and they said they could save on a like the normal route they could save 20% and if they optimize for wind like 30% and I'm just kind of curious because I know DNVGL does a lot of stuff with uh, optimizing routing um, how that might affect what you do, um, and also, um, you know, what, what opportunities you see there. Um, as I think this technology, they're they're taking it very seriously, and I think uh, Peter mentioned that Maersk is doing some stuff with wind as well. So, uh, if you see any opportunities there, 
Is, you said in the beginning you put sails on the vessel? No. Yes. Put uh, sails. Okay. Sails. So, yeah. so on, on, on bikers then, on slow vessels. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, yes. Okay. Wow. How many hours do I have? <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, there is. Um, what, 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 what has the question to do with AIS? Did you mean the connection? I mean, there's a sail on a. You put a sail on a vessel, of course, it can only be for slow vessels, and uh, there's, of course, certain technologies that make it possible. Uh, like these flatner rotors where you have yeah so i just i just know that dnvl dnvgl has done a lot of consulting work on using ais data to yes. show people how to optimize their routing and how sales if you've thought about no, this at no, all no? i mean okay. that's basically it's a uh, sales are uh, they are for fun right they're not used uh, no no this uh, is there's a handful of vessels globally that commercially sell oh, i don't get the question maybe maybe we'll uh, yeah talk on a, yeah we have a beer <laughs> later that's better So more questions from the audience? Okay. Jürgen? I see nothing, then, then I thank you very much again. Thanks,